And one thing I would change differently is mm-hmm. that I would have enjoyed my journey when I was younger in my career more than I did. Mm-hmm. I was extremely competitive. I was, um, uh, I compared myself to others mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's not fair. It's not fair to yourself to compare yourself yeah. to others. The only competition that you have is you. And so mm-hmm. my goal is to get better every day and to deliver better every day and to continue to inspire, have keep my integrity by doing the things I say I'm going to do. Hi guys, this is Vinny Chopra with Apartment Syndication Made Easy, Abundance Mindset, and also Motivational Talk. Hi guys, this is Vinny Chopra back again with Apartment Syndication Made Easy, also Assisted Livings now, uh, Made Easy, my book is coming out, Senior Living Investing Made Easy, my third book, but the first one of course, Apartment Syndication Made Easy on Amazon, Positivity Brings Profitability, and then uh, now the third one, I've got a great guest with me today, Maria, hi Maria, Maria Quattron from Philadelphia, I'm in San Francisco area, You, some, hi, many of you know that, nice to meet you, how yeah, are you? So great to meet you, thank you so much for the opportunity you today, so, you know, so San Francisco you. is uh, one of my favorite cities, uh, uh, I've been living here 43 place. years, 43 oh, years, you know, and fantastic. Uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. My daughter lives in the city. We live in Danville, Black Hawk Country Club, which is outside San Francisco. Our son lives in Oakland. But we are here for a very special episode, guys. And, you know, Maria is going to share with her golden nuggets how she got. Maria, tell us, like, you know, what's your start and how you got into real estate and into real, you know, brokerage. And every, I'm a broker myself. In California, I don't know if you knew that. Since 2004, I've been a broker. Okay. But I never sold or bought anything. I oh, just so used that. <laughs> you used that for what? I just used it for being a best syndicator in the in the country. So oh. I could talk to brokers, listing age brokers. I Most of the time I buy from listing brokers. That has served me very well. They will know the name of the property. And the address, they'll give it to me while they are at the napkin for uh, breakfast or lunch. So uh, <laughs> tell us more about you, please. That's yeah, it's great. Your... That's great. I love that. So I'm born and raised Philadelphian. Uh, prior to being in real estate, I got it in 2004. I was a real I was, excuse me, an advertising account executive for a group of radio stations. So mm-hmm. I sold radio advertising and marketing programs to mm-hmm. small, mid-sized, and large businesses here in Philadelphia and, the, and in the metro market. And mm-hmm. after 11 years of that, I decided uh, in year 10 to go ahead and get my real estate license. Made the decision in 03, started in 04, uh, and then I did both the real estate and the radio until February 05, and that's when I uh, went into real estate with only the one career. I would never say that I was part-time because my first year in real estate, which was from March through December, I Uh sold 17 properties. Oh, good. And oh. it was, mm. you know, a time when you still, it was, it was pretty, it wasn't as easy as it is today to sell 17 properties because we have tools like DocuSign and a lot of other things that in the mm-hmm. internet, you weren't really emailing people back then either. And if you had to write a contract, you had to come into the office or you had to go meet them at a coffee shop or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's many tools today that allow for much more production to happen. But in mm-hmm. year two, which is in my first year with only one career, 
Um, I closed around 38 transactions and it was like 8 million and and change. And then I went to like 50 and then 75 and then over a hundred. So yeah, we know how to. So let me ask you a question then. This is very important for everybody listening. How did you do so well and how did you grow each year? Take us back. Take us back. Was it the attitudinal shift? Was it, you know, your team? I, I'll let you, you know, answer that, right? How so, did you grow so fast? Yeah, yeah. So it's a great question. I mean, I hit the ground running because I had sales experience and business mm-hmm. acumen already mm-hmm. from being in radio sales. When I was in radio, I'd have to call 100 people to get 10 appointments, so maybe close to Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the conversions were much, much smaller. And Mm -hmm. if you can talk to business people about giving you money to their money, their personal money to advertise, you can figure out how to sell somebody a house or rent them a house or lease them a house (laughs) or whatever. So, or even buy an investment property. Um, so what happened was when I got into the industry, I wanted to know how you got the listing because I'm like, how do you get these listings? These Mm -hmm. buyers take a lot of time. How do I get the listings? Listings I figured out very quickly are leverage. And Mm -hmm. so I started to call expired listings. And I became the queen of expired listings. I And I would take, and and what happened, I was taking listings like in areas that were still very, very young in gentrification. And Mm -hmm. so I attracted a lot of investors. So then I was like, I was big on uh, selling uh, investors, building for adaptive reuse, uh, ground for ground up new construction, Mm -hmm. uh, buildings, warehouses for condo conversions or apartment conversions. And then the business changed a bit and uh, there wasn't as many opportunities. They started Mm -hmm. to shrink because this was going on for well over a decade and a half. So then Mm. you pivot. Right. And you find uh, yep, another. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then that part dried up and then you pivot. But in 2013, I left the company that I was with for almost eight years and I bought a Remax franchise and mm-hmm. opened the brokerage company, which, you know, was a very actually difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's still challenging 10 years later. It's almost 10 years. It's still challenging. Um, It takes a lot of energy to grow. And for actually, in the beginning of it, I was doing recruiting and bringing new Mm -hmm. agents in. And then Mm -hmm. in 2016, I was extremely disappointed. The agents Mm -hmm. that I brought in weren't doing really anything. And one by one, they kept leaving. They kept leaving the business. Wow. Right? Not not even me, just the business. Some of them probably just me too. Um, Mm -hmm. But they left the industry and I said, I have to get back into selling full time because mm. otherwise the ship's going down. I know. Yes, yes, yes. So in to. 17, I started getting back into selling full time. And then my listing partner, Dara and I and Lisa and a couple other folks, we were closing a couple hundred units a year, which is a very small meeting. Me, meeting um, me, so sorry. Just a very, a very small amount of people. Uh, and then during pandemic, I decided that I wanted to grow the company again. So here we go again. Trying wow. To grow the so last four years have been real big focus for your next growth. Yeah. Yes. And it's hard. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right. It's challenging to get people it to is. do what they need to do um, to be successful. So yeah. I'm all about inspiration, aspiration, uh, telling them the truth. Oh, you know yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, getting, you know, real transparent with them, accountability. Uh, But I find in general, a lot of people in real estate, generally, they don't treat it like a full-time career. Mm -hmm. It's more like Mm -hmm. an anytime career. Yeah. Well, if I feel like working today, you know, I mean, I wouldn't even say part-time. I would say full-time or anytime. Anytime. I like that word. Yeah. A lot of people want to reach success 
very fast. I mean, that's what I come across. A lot of people say, oh, how did you do it? Or how did you do it, right? And they want it microwave, I call it, you know, success quickly. But nothing comes easy. Rome was not built in a day. You have to put the time and effort and look at it as a business. It's not, it's going to happen overnight. You've got to live, breathe, act, all those things, right? Yeah. It doesn't happen overnight. And in fact, you know, whatever your goal in is, you you need to have a goal that's like a, a goal and then a next goal and the next goal and the next goal. Because if it's just money oriented, then you mm-hmm. get there and then you go, okay, I'm here. Yeah. And yes. then you look around like I did and yeah. <laughs> nothing changed. Yeah. So For sure. things aren't <clears throat> going to change. Money doesn't make things change. What makes change is your own personal development and focusing Mm -hmm. on the deep work that all of us humans have to do to get over a lot of BS that happened in our life. And we all have it. And it's up to you to decide whether you're going to blame your parents and hold them in blame or you're going to take responsibility and action for your life. It's your life. You manifest, manifest what you want. Yeah. So protecting, I don't care what industry you're in syndication, real estate, mortgage, insurance, protecting your energy, being around the right people, right? Being transparent, telling the truth, educating others. So I started a couple months ago doing a live video stream every single day to educate Mm. real estate agents, sellers, buyers, investors, anybody about real estate. From my 20 years experience, my 30 years of sales experience, I got a lot of stuff to say. So yes. I don't hold any. I don't. I don't hold any punches back. I give it away mm-hmm. for free. Mm-hmm. I give mm-hmm. it away for free, and it's my hope that people will rise up. And oh, yeah, and no, be that's attacked. fabulous. I'm with you one thousand percent. And you know the key thing is if you give, give, give people the. I always say, teacher. When the student is ready, the teacher appears and we got to give forward so that those people who want to take it, they will act on it and get better in personal development or learning any skills and things like that. But the big thing is whatever they want to change, a lot of our you know, regular people are shackled, I call it, you know, in their W-2 jobs. I was too. But the thing is, you got to start taking out those shackles out and that is with adjusting your mindset and getting trained properly. Like you said, you know, you're giving so much every day in the training of these and people can catch it, you know, and be a good, good, solid uh, entrepreneur or CEO of their business. Let me ask you a question. If you had to do it over again, how would you have changed it? Which part? (laughs) <laughs> well, you're right. You pivoted two, three times and now you're at a space where I believe the same thing too. Like in, you know, in my case, I would say from multifamily, I've been in it for 14 years, but that has become red ocean because the interest rates hikes and insurance oh, yeah. and they're, people they're, they're, over they're, bidding. They're all bleeding. Everyone's bleeding. 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 No doubt. Badly. Badly. So that's why pivoting into hospitality where the ADRs, average daily rates are increasing and also occupancy is going through the roof at tourist locations. So that's where I've pivoted to with my partners. And then the other thing which I've been trying and getting better at it is the assisted senior living. It could be RAL, residential or commercial. So those are the two pivot things. But in your case, you know, like where you are right now, with the more, uh, no, sales again, because with the economy, with the interest rates, how has that affected your business? How are you taking care? Yeah. Before I answer that, I'm going to answer the question that you asked me. Yes, please, please. And one thing I would change differently is Mm -hmm. that I would have enjoyed my journey when I was younger in my career more than I did. Mm -hmm. I was extremely competitive. I was, um, uh, I compared myself to others Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not fair. It's not fair to yourself to compare yourself to others. The only competition that you have is you. 
And so mm-hmm. my goal is to get better every day and to deliver better every day and to continue to inspire, have keep my integrity by doing the things I say I'm going to do. Yeah. And by, by doing that, I believe that people will trust me, right? Yeah. They trust me. If they if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And if I can't do it, I'm going to let you know that I can't do it. Even if it's going yeah. to like a party, um, you know, sometimes you say, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. And then you don't go. And then it's, it's kind of not nice, right? Or you say you're going to show up for some event. I've gotten like out of bed, even when I wasn't really ready mm-hmm. to get out of bed yet. To go yeah, some yeah. 8 a.m., 7.30 a.m. thing because I signed up for sure. it. Nobody would yeah. care, by the way, if I didn't go. Really, they yeah. wouldn't they care. I, I signed up, so I feel like I have to go. And That's if I don't true. go, it's usually I'm like, oh, I'm sick or something like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not. A, and then this day and age, you can't go anywhere sick because people think you're infecting them with COVID-19. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We have come along way after COVID, that's for sure. But yeah. it has really proven to us that we can accomplish so much business with Zoom meetings, you know, one-on-one rather than traveling through airports and all. But you're right. Personal touch is a little less, but you are able to do a lot more now, you know, in the Zoom meeting, especially in my case, I'm so far away from my properties in Texas and Georgia and Florida and Williamsburg and Tennessee and everything. But Zoom lets you do so much, so much, you know. Let right. me ask you a question, last one. Any pers- business books you're reading lately that you might like to or any apps so that you're using? Yeah. I yeah. am reading uh, Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly. Um, mm-hmm. I've read parts of it before. I'm also reading a book about Bernie Perrant, who was a hockey player. Oh. And then he became a coach because he I couldn't play hockey anymore. It was just happened mm. to be at my at your house. So I picked it I up see. and it was, it's good. It's good. It's about changing your life and mm. about uh, your vision and what what is your vision um, who you have to become to become that person. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you have to change who you are to become the version, the best version of yourself to reach the goals that you do want to reach. And they're not going to happen Love without it. change, without your change, without you taking action, without your belief and having confidence and still mm-hmm. doing it regardless of whatever's happening around you. And mm-hmm. we have to do that. And also I learned a lot about perspective about mm-hmm. when things happen that are, you know, really hard and bad and just like bring you to tears, that there's a lesson to be learned in that. There's a silver lining. Um, really, for me, it was one of grace, uh, vulnerability, um, humility, and mm-hmm. just uh, thinking about uh, things in a different way. So all those things are broke. Like if you look at it and say, well, why me? And say, well, why not me? You know, yeah. what is, what is like, well, I'll say, what is what is God telling me about mm-hmm. what I have to learn here? So what is my learning lesson, right? It's hard to do it while you're in it, but you kind of got to do it while you're in it. And so true. It, so it will true. make it go, it'll make it start to be better, you know? And things, the bad times don't last forever and neither do the good times. So you always have to be prepared yes. for a rainy day and a rainy day means a lot of crap. <laughs> and if we didn't sure. have if we did only had sunny days we wouldn't know we we, we wouldn't, wouldn't know what a blessing a sunny day was yes so true so very true so this is very good very very yeah. good All so the more, listen, you know money doesn't change the fact yeah. that you will still have problems you mm-hmm. will have bigger problems probably the more money you have in the sense but they don't go away And in life, we get paid to solve problems for people. So So that's like, and the more you can solve problems for more people, the more you can scale your business, the more income you can make for you and your family and you give back because the more you make, you can give back to charity, right? You can give back to the community. And that's Mm -hmm. all part of what our responsibility here is to do, is to grow to be the best human that we can so that we can help others rise up. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Maria, for really coming on the show. This is 
fantastic and a lot of people are going to get so much out of these nuggets and if you do like it guys give five star reviews and share this episode with other people who might be you know really able to pick up from it how can people reach you maria yeah sure i'm across all networks um facebook instagram that's my name maria quattro on linkedin uh twitter youtube now TikTok. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. And Me they too. can always go to my website, mqrealestate.com. My phone yeah. number's on there. They can always direct message me on Facebook Messenger. I'm on there as well. So not very hard to find me. If you Google me, I'll pop right up. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate that. And we'll see you next episode. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,